I started to feel like something's not right. I mean, seriously, she laughed at me and said I was hallucinating, but I know what I saw, and I know I wasn't dreaming. Yeah, so the dispatcher. She's claiming that she puts the same code that she does every day and it's just not working. Can you contact the alarm company, please? 573 dispatch, traffic zone. 573. 5600 base on road, Virginia. 628. About a decade ago, I worked in the Century Receiving Division cell block, where we house all of our day's arrestees. As a relatively new officer, I would laugh at the senior officers who would tell us stories about the cell block being haunted. I mean, seriously, how could the building be haunted? It was relatively new at the time. Once when I was working in cell block, a really strange thing happened to me. I was doing checks when I heard a male voice calling from across the hallway. I told the male, just a minute, while I finished my checks. But I continued to hear the same male voice calling, officer, officer. I decided to go and see what this person wanted, just in case it was an emergency. As I walked down the hallway, the voice got louder and louder. I yelled back, I'm almost there. When I got to the other roll of cells, the voice suddenly stopped. As I looked down the hallway, I noticed that all the cell doors were open, meaning that they're all supposed to be unoccupied. I yelled back again. Hello. But it was dead silent. I was a little hesitant at first, but I made my way down the hall to check each cell. As I looked at all the empty cells, I started to feel like something's not right. I began hoping to see someone, anyone, just sitting there. But when I reached the last cell, I saw that it too was empty. Right then, I felt a cold chill. The hair on my arm stood up and I ran the heck out of there. Whenever I worked in cell block on the graveyard shift, I was usually tasked with the headcount of all the arrestees. This was to ensure no one was hurt, missing, or had escaped. So as I made my way past all of the cells, I noticed a cell door that was open. But this wasn't out of the ordinary. We would leave the doors open when no one was in the cell. But as I walked past this cell, I was shocked to find a guy sleeping in it. I immediately closed the door and made sure it locked. At first, I thought it was odd, but I remembered hearing stories about some of the cell door's locking mechanisms jamming. So I made sure the door locked and then went to report it to the turnkey officer. When I told her what I had saw, she laughed at me and said I was hallucinating. She said she just did a head count a few minutes earlier and everything checked out. I wasn't joking, so we both decided to go back, check the door, and identify who the person was. When we got there, the door was still secured, just as I had left it. But when we opened it, no one was there. The cell was empty. Whoever was in the cell had vanished. I thought the guys were playing a joke on me, but even they seemed upset because they thought I was playing around. But I know what I saw, and I know I wasn't dreaming. Most of the officers who worked in the cell block will tell you they don't believe in ghosts. But most of them will admit to you that they had an uneasy feeling while walking the halls, especially
whether you're a believer or not. We're probably in a high point um, in um, deal with exorcisms. Those of faith know the power of good. All of a sudden, one of the boys got, got thrown into the freezer. And evil. Last night, we introduced you to Father Mike Maginot. This is the house. Yes. On the case of an Indiana family tormented by demons, possessed. He asked me to come on over to perform an exorcism because a boy walked up the wall backwards. Indiana State Records chronicling one of the Amon's children while in CPS custody walking up a wall. Another child seen lifted and thrown into a wall. Nobody was touching him. A psychologist and doctor witnessed it all along with caseworker Valerie Washington. Underneath the basement stairs, Father Maginot says police later dug up some items, fake fingernails, a boy's socks, and clothes. Items that were used for necromancy, um, which means uh, conjuring up the dead. He says a portal to hell was opened nearly a century ago by the first homeowners. Reports that the Amon's children would talk to a dark figure. He was saying that, um, what is it like to die? Once you open it up, you can't get rid of them. But Father Maginot says he and his bishop decided to perform an exorcism on the children's mother, Latoya. I cast you out, unclean spirit. It took three exorcisms. Satanic power and enemy. Every Final one in this chair. Every time I put the crucifix on her, she would convulse. But it would be a steady convulsion. I took approximately eight or nine pictures. I, re I started reviewing the pictures, and the, all of a sudden, while I'm involved in this conversation, the AM FM radio went to static and turned up very loud. And it said, you in there. And it started gobbling sound. And I said, and the person on the phone said, what the hell was that? And I said, I don't know. I said, let me call you back. You have, like, signed documents from the state of Indiana, from the family case manager at the hospitals and the CPS workers, clergy, police officers. And that's what really sparked my interest with this, is how many different people validated these strange events uh, that were manifestations of a demonic possession. I called him. I said, man, I got something to tell you. And he said, I got something to tell you. He said, while you were in the basement and standing by the stairs, I saw silhouettes of two thick figures standing in front of the stairs in front of you. This boy was um, in one of the um, emergency room areas. He was kind of growling, you know, and, and his grandmother was uh, holding his hands and, and trying to coax him back. And all of a sudden he started, you know, she was kind of backing him up and the, toward the wall. And then he started to walk up the wall backwards, to, did a flip over her head. And, uh, and, and there was the psychologist and the social ser uh, service worker in that room that saw that and they ran out and got the uh, um, security and the security called the chaplain and you know he called me and they got the police involved and all that. Police and other witnesses were there for it all, sitting in the pews, a series of praising God and condemning the devil. It got more and more, you know, violent. Father Maginot now calling the demon out by name. Once you get the name, you pretty much have it. It's it's like caught. It's like you know you you, you got the spotlight on it. It's nowhere to run. It's it's trapped. Finally, after hours and hours, be gone then in the name of the Father. A release and of the Son. When it was gone from Latoya, it was also gone from the kids. I thought it was a scam to receive federal or state funds to assist them with their bills or whatever the case may be. And now, how do you feel? I feel that, <laughs> seriously speaking, I feel that uh, it's something very bad going on in that house.